Welcome to another quick tip of the Great EV Show. Today we're going to be talking about hydraulic transducers, what they are, what they do, and why you should install one in your electric vehicle. One of the many advantages of using an AC motor system on your DIY electric car is the fact that you can use regenerative braking. This feature is present in most of the OEM cars being sold today and is, for the most part, a clear indication of a modern electric drive system. Regenerator braking works by turning your electric motor into a generator whenever it's not needed to push the car. It sends the generated power back to your battery while at the same time stopping your car. And some cars like the Tesla Model S and the BMW i3 are set to regen as soon as the driver backs off the accelerator pedal, allowing drivers to essentially use one pedal driving style. While other cars like my Chevy Volt apply regen only when the brake pedal is pressed. Both of these approaches work great and it takes very little effort to get you used to them. The beauty of the AC systems available to us DIY folks in recent years is of course that you can set them to do either one of the region styles, or both. And that is the case with my Samba. I wanted to set neutral region to about 10%, just enough to allow the motor to feel like the old BW interior combustion engine. But I also wanted to add region on the brake pedal to 8 with the ever notoriously wimpy drum brakes found on these old air cool BWs. And the only way to do that is by using a hydraulic transducer. If you guys remember back in episode 10 of the eSamba project series, I installed a transducer and hooked it all up. I ended up going to HP EVS and those guys helped me to turn all the functions on the Curtis controller and they tuned it all for me. So this is a generic uh, hydraulic transducer. This one will do 1000 PSI, which is better than the 500 PSI that I have on my Samba. Uh, you are gonna need, of course, to buy one of these. You don't have to buy the premium brand like the MSC that I have uh, on my Samba. You can buy one of these. These are just as good and you can save a lot of money by buying one of these. Um, I also used a, a T um, that is made for the BWs, uh, brake lines. They usually install them in the back to split the line coming from the front of the master cylinder and it splits it off to go to each uh, of the wheels in the back. Uh, you can buy one of those or you can just order one of these. These are going to be available at EV West and uh, as far as I know they're about a couple of bucks he said. So this is going to be a more affordable option for you guys to buy and essentially what it does it just it adds an, an extra port on your system so that you could screw the hydraulic transducer on your brake lines. Uh, you can install this like I did way out there in the back of the car um, but you could also do it in the front where your master cylinder is at and um, you can just buy the little lines either the uh, hard lines or or the soft lines depending on your application depending on your model or vehicle and stuff you will also need of course uh, to have access to one of these which is a Curtis controller programmer and you can buy these, of course, uh, and I think you could probably rent them from some place. So you'll have to look for that and try to find out um, how to get your hands on one of these so that you can mess and enable some of the functions on your controller. All right, we're gonna run through a simple setup uh, using this controller. Uh, keep in mind that this is an early version of the software on my controller. Uh, I believe it's 308. Um, and this might be uh, an early version of this controller. I've seen pictures of newer ones, but it should be pretty similar to what you will find. So let's run through these things. Um, in order to set up your new hydraulic transducer, you have to go into the program, user settings, 
Um, then there's forward, reverse, max speed, control mode, restraint, current limits, throttle, brake. So then you find the brake one and you enable it. Um, it's probably going to come off as a default and so you have to turn it on. Here we go. We just turned it on. You can go and choose the type. Brake type. Uh, and it has one through five and I have two brake dead band it's at one volt uh, you can set it one through five also on that one and then the brake map is 72 percent then there's brake max it's set at five volts right now then the brake offset it's a hundred percent brake filter is 10 Hertz uh, BLC brake enable is off so those are my settings that you have and we can play with those until you get your brake just exactly how you want it I think for me the aim is really to have full region brake before or just just before or right as the mechanical brakes start kicking in and of course that's to help the, the uh, awful brakes that these old cars have um, and that way it'll it'll send more of the power back to your battery so that way it's it's more efficient and stuff so let's do a test and see how it works with the region on and then with the region off we're gonna make a mark um, in the ground and then just go I don't know we'll pick a speed like let's say 20 miles an hour and see how fast I can stop from 20 to 0 and then we'll run it once with with without the uh, the region break on and then once with and see how much of a difference that makes okay let's do that All right, the results are in. Out of the three passes, the best that we can get without region was 16 and a half feet, and with region was 10 um, and a half feet, basically. So you gain about four feet at, at that speed. But this is only, uh, keep in mind that this is only going 20 miles an hour to zero. Um, region usually works better at the higher RPM. Uh, and then it starts tapering off towards the, the lower RPMs. So this is this makes a huge difference once you're doing 60 miles an hour and then you step on your brake. It really adds about the same braking uh, force as the mechanical brakes. So there you go, guys. That's what a hydraulic transistor can do for you on your DIY electric car. Um, thanks for watching this month's quick tip. And now we go back to the studio with Michael and Hutch.